Ladies and gentlemen, Tatio Vance here, and welcome to a news update. Now today, we're going to be talking about 3.2. Now these patches are coming around really quickly now. The time that you've absorbed the content from one patch, you're not far off from receiving the next patch, and I prefer that than waiting six months like we did before, in some cases even a year. Pleased with that, looks like they're going to be hitting these targets. They did hit the previous target, although... I have to admit, it was a little bit buggy. Now, one positive with 3.1 this time, although it was buggy, is they are patching it to make the performance and the gameplay better. Where 3.0, they did leave quite a lot of the bugs and the issues in there. So I'm pleased that they're micro-patching it now. It is good news, so that means that... So although we do get the patch on the date that they specify, if it is a few little bugs here and there, we know we're going to get patches. And from the patches we've seen so far, we're up to 3.1.3. Each patch, I've actually seen quite a significant increase in not just performance, but also stability. Now, there is the odd crash every now and again. I think I played for an hour and a half and I did actually have a crash. And that's in the current build. But saying that, the performance is better. And this will read true once I do my full performance test and you guys get to see it. So you can compare it against 3.0. So what are we going to be seeing in 3.2? We are going to be seeing an array of marine outfits going from the light, medium and heavy. This also includes the outlaws outfit as well in the same way, medium light and heavy as well on the gameplay side what are we going to see now this is the big one this is the one i'm sort of really looking forward to because this is going to make it much better we're going to be seeing quantum travel locking between two or more players so what that means let's just say we're going to a planet we're about to link our ships together and quantum together and go to that same location that is going to be brilliant it sounds like quite a basic thing but these are some of the sort of basic things that we need in game so we can actually play the gameplay that's available so i'm definitely looking forward to that one we're going to be seeing economy polishing that's sort of expected we're going to have the ability to create groups and the whole focus of this is making it more accessible for groups of people to play together i'm not quite sure how far they're going to go on this it does say that we're about to do jobs and missions together and integrate them so we can play together and complete them at the same time. I think that's just sort of a must. The challenge you've got at the moment, you know, you, your mate joins her and you, and you say, right, I'm going to go and do this mission. And he's like, oh, I'll come with you. Well, other than him keeping you company a lot for long the ride, there's no real point for him, really. If you could actually create a group and then accept a mission and then everyone that's coming along would get a reward in cash, that just makes it all of a sudden much more viable for bigger groups of people to do cooperative gameplay. So once again, a really, really important one. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to see some updates to the service beacon. The service beacon is something that we all have. You can activate the service beacon yourself and you can basically create a mission off the back of it so you create the service beacon create a mission and then it sends out a signal and people can jump to that location to either help out or blow you up one or the other <laughs> next up we're going to be seeing mining and it actually says mining planetary bodies this will give us the ability to mine from planets or asteroids and also you will be able to sell it as well so if you've got a prospector the next patch is definitely going to be for you we're going to see some design and also some animations improvements for the quantum jump as well. Looks pretty cool already, but like I said in previous videos, a lot of these sort of animations will be improved over the period of time, so they will get better. We are going to be having an update to 2.0 ship systems and weapons. What this means for us is that the modules could fail, they could overheat, misfire, they could take critical failure damage, and this also applies to the shield generator, power plant, weapons, and so on. So this just makes it more component-based, so rather than just a hole in the wing or you lose a wing, it might be, you know, one of your guns out, the shield generator's gone down. So that's going to be pretty cool. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be random when you shoot a ship or you're able to focus on different components. I know the longer term goal is the component option, but doesn't say here if it's going to be introduced in this round. We'll have to wait and see. We're going to be seeing an introduction of new items as well, new variables in games from the kiosks as well. We're going to be having a update pass on the Moby Glass as well. So this is from a UI point of view. So they're improving the presentation and the functionality and the way it works. We're also going to see the introduction of a new feature inside the service beacon, 
and that will be escort and what that means is you will have the ability for another ship to escort you and defend you we're going to see the first introduction of the fps combat ai now this is going to be very interesting this is not flight this is man on the ground i know they've been working on this for quite some time and we know what ai are like in most games they're never really that good I suppose we've got to keep in mind their first draft is probably not going to be the best in the world as long as it improves over time. We will be able to engage and attack these AI as well. This will add another layer to some of the missions we have to do as well because it won't be just a ship attacking you. It could be an AI in one of the stations as well. On the ship side, we're going to be seeing the Mustang Beta. A lot of us have been looking forward to this because the Mustang series are a really cool bunch of ships. They were quite tight inside for the ones you could go inside, the old camper van. So I'm really looking forward to having a look around the new drafts of these ships. So we're going to see the Beta, the Delta, which used to be my favourite ship until the armour sort of got reduced and they removed them OP dump fire missiles. We've also got the Gamma and the Omega revisions as well, if you've got one of them. We're going to see the introduction of the Origin 600i. This is actually really significant because... This is going to show us the design style for the 300 and obviously bigger. And I must admit, I do like the look of this ship. Next up is the Anvil Hurricane. I know a lot of people out there are looking forward to this one as well. We've got the Aegis Eclipse coming in as well, which looks like some sort of stealth bomber. Looks really cool. The Avenger Revision, which we've seen lots of pictures. It looks like about 50% bigger. Very, very cool. Light with the dominant textures. This is going to be a really interesting review when it comes out. The Vandal Blade as well. Seen some early pictures of it. I haven't seen any like proper in-game ones yet, but I've got to say, the thing looks freaking awesome. I do want an alien ship. I'm sure most of us do. It'd be nice just to have one in your collection or something. And it could be the Blade. We'll have to wait and see. From the weapon side... We're going to be seeing a distortion repeater and three other weapons as well. Now moving on to core technology, we're going to see the introduction of network bind culling as well. This will aim to improve performance in multiplayer by cutting down the number of entities that exist on the client. So we should see improvements overall on our CPU and maybe also on our GPU. We're all welcoming performance increases in Star Citizen. We have seen an increase in the previous build. If you did play 3.1 when it just went live, I suggest you patch it and try now. I'm definitely seeing an increase in FPS. And yes, it's been on full servers as well. So overall, we're definitely seeing strides in the right direction here. And then finally, overall, we're generally going to be seeing overall performance optimization as well. That could be OLEDs and loads of other stuff as well. So 3.2 is looking pretty exciting. Brings in quite a few ships and some new core gameplay there that will drive multiplayer engagement. So I'm really looking forward to it. Can't wait to look around all these new ships as well, particularly the 600i. Must sound, I am looking forward to taking a look around that one. And lastly on the agenda today, if you're looking to join a Star Citizen organization, check out the link in the description below. If you're thinking about joining Star Citizen, there's a referral link down there, which will give you some cash as well when you sign up to get you started as well. That's it for me. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.